Ty, I met at Market Tech and Ty gave me the best story that Ty I've been using all around the USA, just so you know that. And I am letting them know that it is Ty from Nebraska who gave me the story. So, all right, just wanted to let you know that. I probably should have your link somewhere and everywhere so you can get a little of the traffic from that, right, Ty? Welcome, Monique, welcome. Hello to everybody who, and if I am just meeting you for the first time, I'd like to say hello. I am Maria Elena Duran. I'm with the Grow With Google team, so I'm excited to be here. I've been on the Google team for seven years, but I also run a small business in our business because I do have the actual experience of being grassroots and hands-on, so I know what it takes to be butcher Baker, candlestick maker, as well as now head videographer, head script writer, creative director, and everything else that's involved in running a business while still taking care of customers. What we do is we help you get um, found on and then grow fast on Google. So we get you get found and you grow fast on Google when you connect with us. And that is why I'm working here with the Grow Nebraska team. So welcome to everybody. If you want a copy of the slides in the handout, this is the QR code to use, all right? Or you could use that bit.ly link. I'm going to actually drop that. Oh, now I've effectively covered that link. Let me see where I covered it here, where I was going to copy and paste and just drop that here in the chat box so that you'll have that. Hello, Emily. Hello. Perfect. See, I love that. Hello, hello, hello. I love that P Emily has told us about her business because you never know who somebody is in the room, who they influence, um, what they do, who they'll become. So always good to network and be able to share your business qu that quickly like that. Thank you, Emily, for doing that. Again, this is where you can find the slides. You can use that QR code. You can use the link at the bottom or the link that I just dropped at the chat, right in the chat box. So we're going to dive on in. You have met me already. This is still me. And yes, I am with the Google team, so welcome. And then I do come with small business background. So that is really where I talk about everything is how you can apply this as a small business because knowledge is not powerful until it is applied. So as we talk today, we are going to focus on how you can use YouTube to grow your business. Now, if you see the blue link in the middle, that's where you find everything small business on Google. You can find me if you want to connect with me at Maria Duran on X or Twitter. That's the first handle that you see there and then the at marketing coach Maria is where you can find me on Instagram and I would love if you did find and tag me because I will repost retweet and share you in my stories getting you a little bit of more visibility a little bit of juice there into people coming to come and see who you are so a little bit more traffic right Ty so thank you for being here today and thank you to grow Nebraska let's dive in and talk about YouTube now if this is your first time to have a session with me would you put a number one in the chat box I'd love to know if you've got a YouTube channel drop the link in the chat box because you never know who somebody is who they'll become and who they influence right welcome welcome C. Allen welcome Emily so grateful that you're here now we know that people are watching YouTube look at the numbers there two billion let me just blow your mind for just a moment okay because I know a lot of people of course TikTok's been at the top of the news right for all sorts of things and TikTok in 2020 became the big dog with where people went for video, a lot of short form video. You'll see short form too in stories, in Instagram and in reels. But here's the thing, there are a billion people viewing TikTok, TikTok videos. So there's a billion every single day, one billion every day. In, tick, in YouTube Shorts, which is the short form of YouTube, so there's long form, you've seen it when you want to know something, an unboxing, you're trying to figure out how does that, how do I fix that on my washing machine again, we go to YouTube University, go to go check it out, and that's long form video, but short form, those are 60 seconds or less, there are 50, five, zero billion views every single day, 1 billion to 50 billion, so yes, YouTube is a search engine, it's a social network, and it is a place where eyeballs are at. So we'll talk about how you can optimize and take advantage of that, especially as a small business because you are nimble and you can use this. Well, wonderful, everybody. I say the hellos, Rodney, Julie, thank you so much for sharing your YouTube channel there. Emily, thank you, thank you for putting your YouTube name there as well so we can find your channel welcome to everybody thank you for finding that chat box hello olivia i see you there so people come here and they like to look at a lot of different things did you know that four out of five videos that are viewed on youtube are actually unboxing videos 
So perfect, Olivia. Thanks for sharing your YouTube channel. So today we'll talk about creating a YouTube channel. Now, many of you have YouTube channels here already, as I see from people dropping the links. Is there anybody here without a channel? Just say, just put the number two if you are without a channel, because I just want to know the speed of where I'll cover different things. We're also going to talk about how you can create and add videos to your channel. Now, to those of you who do not have a YouTube channel, that doesn't mean it's time to jump off. And the reason it doesn't mean that is because have you optimized your channel? It's great to have a channel out there, but if you build it, people will not come. If you've not optimized it, if the search engine doesn't feel confident in you because YouTube is not just a social network and a video platform, <clears throat> it's a search engine. And if you don't believe that, just take a look at how people use that. The number one search engine in the world is Google. The number two is YouTube. Now, the number one search engine for Gen Z is YouTube. It was TikTok for just a short blip in 2020, but it is YouTube. So when we talk about YouTube shorts, that's what we'll really be focusing on there and how you can use that. And I actually have put a strategy in here that was not a part of the original deck that I've used before, but it is a strategy when I was at um, work, uh, the Workbench Conference. So the Workbench Conference happened actually after Markitech. And it is everybody, you know, it's all those DIYers, the remodelers, the um, people who are doing construction, but how to, you can do it how can you know do stucco how can you replace your floor and all of that there were a little over 8,000 people at that event and I shared with them a great YouTube strategy and they shared a lot of info with me and your YouTube strategy and you are going to see the benefit of that today in the additional slide so hang on for that okay and then how you can promote your videos with ads but you know I'm not going to spend a lot of time on ads. I'll talk about what you can use for free because I don't believe in promoting anything out until you max out everything free, right? We're bootstrap marketers and we've got to make sure that we are good stewards of cash and that we don't get into a cash, cr cash flow crunch. Okay, so we're going to talk about this first. I think the other links went to the, can you post to everybody? Oh, um, oh, you know what? Yes, you're right. Could you do that? Um, Oh, here we go, Zoe. I, I have the ability to do that. I just didn't see it by default. Thank you so much, Julie C. I love that Julie said that. All right, that's the link that you need to go to. Or again, um, let me pause the share here so I don't flash in front of you. You can use this as well. There we go. You can use this QR code or type in the link. All right. Your YouTube link, oh, just um, copy and paste that and share that in the chat box. That's all you need to do, Olivia, then you're good to go, okay? All right, everybody, that's where you can get the handouts for today, as well as you see that I put the link in the chat box. Julie, thank you so much for making sure that everybody can see that. I did not even realize I had done that. All right. So here's how you can create your YouTube channel. For those of you who that have a channel, make sure you've checked all the boxes here. Of course, you can sign in. This is the basics just to get started. You can sign in if you're in your Google account, which a free personal Gmail account is a Google account. You're solid. You can just refresh your credentials and you're in or click sign in. That's all you need to do. You see that we give you two opportunities to create a channel when you get into YouTube. And that is in the drop down menu that happens to the right under the icon of your name or it actually pops up when you first start working in YouTube. <clears throat> now you also have the opportunity to customize your channel. Okay, so you could do that as well. You can customize. Now, if you've not seen this in the back end, let me see if I can show you. I am going to, hold on here. I've got to bring up another screen, which sometimes gets into a little bit of wonkiness here. Um, and hold on here, I'm going to change the YouTube account. Um, and then I'm going to take you into YouTube Studio. Because when you're in that drop down menu, if you already have YouTube access, then you might want to get into YouTube Studio. So, YouTube Studio, and I've got to make it bigger, so give me just a moment again. Just takes a bit. So YouTube Studio is the back end, and you get there from this drop-down menu under your icon. It'll say YouTube Studio. Let me show you that. Actually, let me do that here. Close your eyes because I never know what YouTube's going to come up with. YouTube Studio. If you go to YouTube Studio, and there you go. That's where you'll actually land. If you already have a channel set up, that's how you get there. Okay? All right. Now let's go back here. You will see I go out to live demonstrations every now and again. 
because platform, the platform is ever changing. So you can customize your channel or you can upload your video. Now, when you customize, we're talking about branding, everybody. And branding is more than just a look. It's a feel. It's your tone. It is your brand voice. And this is really important because you need to make sure that's consistent across all channels because brand consistency and seeing that builds trust. When we see a different logo on Facebook, on TikTok, and then a different one on Instagram and now on YouTube, and maybe your name is different here and there that is inconsistent and we wonder whether or not you're a solid business do you really are you focused is this a hobby or is this a real business and that's important for you to come across as you're as an expert at what you do because no matter what we do and who we serve no matter what their budget is whether or not they can afford us they definitely are still looking for somebody that's an expert at what they do okay so you want to customize and build that brand trust by being consistent so in youtube studio is where you ex access everything the ability to customize to lay things out to manage your playlist this is a chance for you to show the uniqueness of your personality and your brand voice while still also reaching people on youtube so the first thing you can work on is your layout right your layout is what you have available to everybody there when they first come into your channel. Now understand that there is a trailer video that you can choose. A trailer video is just like it sounds, a trailer. It gives them a sneak peek of what they're getting into. But there's also the featured video that you can utilize. So the video spotlight, if you look underneath, and I know it's a little bit hazy because I'm trying to make it as big as possible, but you'll see channel trailer, that's your first choice. That is one video. Featured video is another. Those are two different videos. The trailer is just like it sounds. It's a trailer. Give them a sneak peek of what they're going to get. But then the featured video is a huge thank you video that lets them know, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button. This is what you're going to get. You're going to tell them what you told them in the trailer and tell them again and let them know that you appreciate that because that is how you build those relationships and people who will share you into their contact sphere as somebody that they need to look at and connect with. Yes, you have to have great content and information, but you need to make it easy for people to just take you and share you in snippets. And that's the best way through a featured video. Then you'll see in below, there are featured sections. Those featured sections by default start with short videos at the top and then the videos that you just uploaded. So you see those two rectangles underneath. That's what that says. If you can't read that, it's a short video or videos. And if you can't read that, I'm going to send it out again one last time. Um, that's how you can get a copy of today's slides where you can actually see this right there in front of you if it's not coming across very clear yet. So you see that you have those two things. Well, understand that you can actually put playlists underneath that. So like a bookshelf. So imagine you're looking at your channel. You've got your featured video, which is there for anybody who hasn't subscribed. Once they hit subscribe, now the feature, the, the, so you've got the trailer, sorry, and then you've got featured video afterward that shows up once they subscribe. It's only showed to your subscribers. So you just want to love on them and let them know that you appreciate them being here. And then what happens is now you have short form video that's going to be at the very top, but then you can choose different playlists. Why do you want to do that? Because YouTube is a search engine and it's evergreen. And because it's a search engine, we have to remember SEO and GEO. So there's search engine optimization and generative engine optimization. SEO is search like we know it keywords, good practices, making sure that we've got it technically aligned so that the so the search engine has confidence in you. But GEO is generative search, and that is how AI is pulling information from your site and from your channel. And understand that when people are in Google search, they're not even in YouTube, your channel will come up third or fourth in there because it's got great authority. And of course, Google has confidence in its own products, which YouTube is a product of Google. So you can customize and put in your playlist. Let's say you wanna get known for home decor or woodworking 101. I would actually name a playlist Word Working 101 and put all of the actual videos that I create there about work, woodworking together. It makes it easy for a person to find and use. And remember, helpful user content is very important and something that ranks high in the algorithm. Plus, it gives you a little bit SEO juice because you're putting the actual search terms, the words people use when they're looking for your product, service, or solution. 
All right, branding, remember what I said, profile picture, banner image, keep that consistent. You may be bored with it. We are normally bored by, with our images before anybody even notices it, but we're looking for consistency, all right? Once we've done that, you're gonna put your basic information there, right? What's the name and is it consistent? Again, remember, we're looking for that trust. Are you changing every which way? And a lot of creatives will do that. I understand that, but this is where it gets boring because consistency builds trust put that description in, use the words that people use when they're looking for what it is that you're going to provide on your channel. If you don't know what that is, read your reviews because in their own words, they're telling you what matters most to them. Read your comments because in their own words, and you wanna use their own words because relevance and how well you match what people are searching, those keywords, key phrases, is super important to showing up and the search engine delivering you in search results. Now you can actually update your URL, put links and contact info. Now let me give you a bit of a hint on your links. You know, you put, you can put your links in their website and all of this, that's all by default, so you can put your website. But why would you do that? We know that a link is a website. We know that already, we get it. So what does your website do? So for example, in mine, I might say, grow fast on Google instead of website and they can click on that and go to my website because that's ultimately why people want to talk to me. They don't want to talk to me because of all my technical knowledge or the how to's. They just want to grow fast on Google. So that is what I put there because it's the number one benefit statement that I know people are searching and saying, Hey Google, Hey Alexa, how do I grow fast on Google? So I use that. Now you have your banner image, you have your profile picture, you've got your video spotlight. Remember trailer first, then once they subscribe to you, you've got to tell them what you're going to deliver deliver to them and set those expectations so they can be super dis excited with you and share you with everyone because they know what they're sharing and they can feel confident this is not going to hurt their rep. Now you can organize those sections just like I was telling you into those playlists using words that people use. Be relevant, match them. That's what the algorithm is looking for, that you're providing helpful info that matches what people are searching. Now as you create and add videos to your channel, there's some decisions you need to make. What kind of video is important and that you want to showcase in your actual channel? Are you more professional where you need a studio? Perhaps it's more branding that you're doing on your channel. Maybe you are academic, financial, an attorney, so you want to have that very professional view. Are you more immediate? So you can use these beautiful things that we have that are actually a, a full video studio in a phone. Is that more important for us to be immediate and to be real and authentic? So you have to make that decision. And then you need to decide what story is it that you want to tell? What is it that you're doing with this video? You've heard me before, for those of you who've been in a session with me, that it's great to hope that your video is going to reach the right customer. And while hope is wonderful to have, it is such a poor strategy. It's important for us to have a clear strategy. What is our video supposed to do? What does success look like, sound like, and feel like once they watch the video? What is that next step? So do you want them to feel feel excited, angry, um, inspired, motivated, fearful, concerned? Uh, what is it that's the feeling that you want them to get from your actual video? What's the purpose? Is it to bring more leads? Is it to showcase a product so that they have a little bit more confidence? Maybe showcase something afterwards so they don't have buyer remorse? Is it to help them fix something or take advantage of that really utilizing something that they've got a service or a product so that it increases their lifetime value with you as a customer and maybe even increasing, increasing repeat purchases? So what's the purpose and who's the star of the video? Is it you? Is it a customer? Is it a team member? Is it your product? Who is the star? This is important too. Too many times people are trying to throw everything along with the kitchen sink into a video and it becomes very confusing. You only have a few seconds with video. In fact, I was doing a TikTok study because we, we do some, well, I was working with a team that does TikTok video and TikToks, people will leave TikToks in 0.6 seconds. So in 0.6 seconds, they'll leave. And they have already figured out at that 0.15 second, they have to say something that's a little controversial at the very beginning to get them to stay in. It's almost an opposite of the message that's gonna be coming in the TikTok. So for you, what is it that you know about your customer or your best client who's gonna be watching this video? What is that purpose and what is it that they need along their decision journey that will help them stay with you, watch your video, and they're going to see you as an expert or somebody who can help them in their 
path. So for example, you could start with a business story, right? Who you are, what do you do, why do you do it? It could be that simple. Now I'm going to teach you one of the best go-to stories that I like to use because it's something that I know draws people in and it's easy for you to remember. Plus it makes it more engaging because you have to understand when you're doing video, you can't tell people, all right, I'm going to tell you a story. Because if you do that, that's the adult mind now taking that saying, okay, now I'm going to switch off and go to sleep. Because although we adore stories, as adults, we don't want to see your vacation pictures and the 500 different stories around those. We want to see the highlights and that's what you're going to give them is that highlight reel. So you could do your business story as outlined here, but you could also do what's known as the hero story. And that's a five year old storyline of once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. Okay. Once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. Let me model it for you. All right. My name is Maria Elena Duran and there was a knock on our door when I was eight years old. My father was an insurance agent and it was a family whose house had burned down. They came to thank my father because they didn't have to worry about anything. He had already done everything to make sure that their property would be be reimbursed and be taken care of. They felt very, very much comfortable in something that was a horrible situation and they were so grateful. And it was at that moment that I decided that's what I want to do. I want to help people in the moments when they feel most helpless. My name is Maria Elena, Maria Elena Drawn. I'm an insurance agent. Let me help you. All right. Now, what did I do in there? Once upon a time, there was a knock on the door. This family came. You see how I dropped you right into the actual story? That's what they do in TV and movies and how they draw you in. They drop you right into the action into the story, right in the edge there. Once upon a time, suddenly there was this, you know, there was a fire. They were thankful. Luckily, my dad was an insurance agent, so he was able to help them. That's when I decided that's my dream and I made it my dream. Now I could have used that same 35 seconds that I just used explaining that story saying, hi, I'm Maria Lena, Maria Lena Duran. I help you with your property casualty. I can insure your house. I can insure your boat, your recreational vehicles, your vacation home. I could have spent it doing that. And that would have been what everybody else does or I could have told you a story that you can hang on to and take and now share with your contact sphere. And you can do that within your actual YouTube channel with your videos. You just take away the once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. Like you didn't hear me say that, but I'm saying that in my mind to keep that structure. And that's that five-year-old storyline. So you can tell a traditional business story. You can tell the hero story. You can also tell a product or service story. So the Hero of that is the product or service, or it could be your actual customer giving a great review about how your product or service actually saved them. And then of course there's a promotional story. Maybe you want to announce new products or a new team member, or maybe a special offer. All right. The thing here is you've got to capture people's attention right away. If you don't capture their attention right away, all they need to do is swipe and they're on to the next story. That's all they need to do. So what is it that you're doing that you know that they need? That's why it's so important for us to be expert on our customers. We have to do all that heavy lifting to figure out what is it they need and what their decision journey actually looks like and how we can help them along the way. So some of the ways that we all film are, you know, we can do selfies, backdrops, voiceover. So you don't have any video on or voice or audio on. You just have a voiceover that you're going to put over there or you're doing it during the actual time. There's the top down. So if you don't know what the top down is, it's when you take something and then you're just looking, you know, from the top down. So my camera's here, I'm pointing down. And if I were to give a POV, a point of view of what it looks like for me looking down here at my keyboard, that's what I would do is a top down. I could just point and shoot, move and action. You can add text or animation. There's so many things that you can do and do understand that YouTube has in YouTube now a new AI that works just like CapCut and you can utilize that for free. So you can look at the link below here and there are so many AIs that are rolling out, especially within YouTube that you want to take advantage of again, that are hundred percent free. So when you're, sh you are shooting, look behind you. All right. We've all done enough zoom video, Google meet calls, go to meeting calls that we have seen unmade beds, um, significant others who are coming out from around the corner that we weren't expecting 
children, uh, animals, <laughs> parents interrupting. We've seen all of that. We have to take that into account because now we are putting something that is evergreen. It's going to be there forever online. So we want to make sure we look behind us and think of that space. We also need to look at lighting. Is it really good for us? So for me, as I'm talking to you right here, I actually have two loom cubes right here because I am in an office, but in the corner of the office. So the window's way over there. So it's way over there. I can't even get any nice window light. That's the best lighting is to get natural window light, but I can't even hope for that, right? Because I'm way here in the corner. So I've got to bring other lighting in or else, you know, now I'm going to have to use Zoom's little thing, little function where it makes me look like my makeup's on too thick. <laughs> but I do at least have lighting here. So lighting for you, you know, is important. Just take a look and see what it looks like when you're on the camera. Do a few recordings, get a look at that. But the most important one here is sound, everyone. We can be forgiving of lighting. You could look like you're just there in the shadows lurking. We can be forgiving of, okay, I see an unmade bed, and is that a candy wrapper that I see in the middle of your bed? We are okay with that. But if we cannot hear you, if the sound is crunchy, if it's a little bit loud, I mean a little bit soft and then really loud, like it really hurts and echoes our ear. So if it's off balance or, you know, there's a lot of wind in the background, we are not forgiving of that. We will leave a video in an instant that does that. We do need great sound. So take a check on your sound. Even when I'm on the Comic-Con floor, because I go to Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, so there's 100,000 people around me on the Comic-Con floor. And I'm five foot. I stand all of five foot. Everybody's towering above me. So all I'm hearing is the, the, the rustle of vinyl and, and canvas of backpacks because that's where I'm at. I'm in the midst of it. If I didn't have a microphone set up right here from my phone, so I'm on my phone, but I actually have a wireless mic right up here because if I didn't have that, then all you'll hear is the hustle and bustle. And while it's a great video, maybe you've never been on the Comic-Con floor and seen that backside of Comic-Con, now they're not even interested because they can't hear. Now, if you need music for your actual videos, you see that we have a free royalty free library within YouTube and you can utilize this. And I love to use this. This is so helpful. Or if you've never been and utilized Canva, Canva has a great source, too, which I love. But you can use this audio library and use now audio that you don't have to worry about it um, getting being a creative or a copyright strike to you. All right. Also know that there is AI now in YouTube, which will actually match a audio that is royalty free with the video that you're uploading. So that is available to through YouTube, through your YouTube creators channel. Now, as you add videos to your channel, you'll see you click on that button where your icon, your picture icon or your initial icon is in the top right. And you'll go ahead and upload videos and select the files. Now you can go here and add that title. Really think about the words people use, not just the title that you think is cool or is industry standards. You want to use a title that is words that people will search for or mean something to the people that you want to view it. The same thing with the description. What are they going to get from this and in their own words? Not not industry speak. The reason I keep saying this is remember what I said about relevance. You need to match the words saying that I'm going to do a pediatric dentistry video on orthodontists on orthodontics, right? Is here. If somebody's searching for how do I straighten my 13 year old's teeth painlessly, you don't match. Do they could they mean the same thing? They could, but Google is an algorithm working on search phrases and it doesn't match so it won't show you. And then you can choose the thumbnail that best represents you. Thumbnails are often what draws us in, so make it interesting. Sometimes it's a little hokey because it's just like right out there, your face. When faces are there, it really does draw you there. But what's nice is you can A-B test that. You can even put some AI thumbnail covers there and just get a, a feel for what actually is the better thumbnail cover. Now you can use subtitles underneath there. You can use end screen. I encourage you to use thumb subtitles because 64% of us look at videos without any audio on. So if somebody sees your video that way, are they getting some information? Are you enticing them with something? Some of the captions there, your description or the subtitles so that they will actually save it and watch it later when they can turn their volume on. Do you have an end screen that gets them to do what is it that you want them to do next? What's that call to action? Because all of us are busy. We get 12,400 messages on any given day. And because of that, we don't know what to do next when we stop something because we've got a lot of other things in our mind, a lot of mind clutter, 
tell them what to do next. What is it that you want them to do in a clear action? And then there are cards that can pop up during your video to showcase what you're highlighting or even links to your site that might take them into deeper information about that product, service, or solution. Now you want to check and make sure as it goes through, you click next. It's going to automatically do this to make sure there's no copyright issues found. Then you can choose the visibility. Do you want it private? That's super private, meaning that no one else can see it except for the people that you send this link to, and they have to open it up with the email that you send it to. So if you're like my mom, so my mom's in her 80s, and she'll get a video that somebody has made private like that with her, her private um, financial trading group, and she has three different Google accounts. So she's in one account, but now she doesn't know how to open this up. Now she thinks she can't get into it, but it's because she's in the wrong account. So it's very specific that you need to make sure you're in the right account that it was shared with. There is also unlisted, which is a huge, a huge link that you have to use. So it's hard to figure out how to copy that as far as writing that down and kind of cracking that. So unlisted often is what works best to keep it private, but easy for people to get to without them having to make sure they're in the right Google account. And then of course public, make sure it's public and you can schedule that. So you don't have to have it just when you put it live. It depends on what the purpose is of your video. Is it supposed to be instant and live? Now you'll see when you want to share it, when you're done uploading it, I mean, you can share it on any of these tools. It's already formatted for that or you can just use the link there. What I also like to do is if I'm telling somebody specifically, here's how you figure this out. At 20.23 at this moment at that timestamp is when you can figure this out then I can also share it just at that timestamp so they drop right into there instead of watching all the other things that may not be relevant to them. Hey, I wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to our sponsor Shortform which is a wonderful tool to help you be able to work smarter not harder by being able to take tremendous amount of information and get to the actual gist of it. Really all of the key points from blog publications to articles to actual videos in YouTube to books. You have all of that available to you through short form and I've got a free trial available for you utilizing this link. Every week I do the Google update which every Wednesday the audio format comes out in our free community and then on Thursdays you get it by email. How I'm able to do that because I look at 65 to 70 different sources again from video to actual articles and publication is I'm able to utilize short form to help summarize and look at exactly what is the key points that would be of most interest to me and whether or not I should delve in deeper so that I can apply how you can actually apply that as a small business and content creator making the most use of an update for you. I utilize short form. Feel free to use this link for your free trial. If you decide to subscribe also using that link you'll get 20% off, which is great because for the price of one book, you have access to all of this and it truly is very focused and complete. It is the best tool that I get to use and I wanted to share it with you. Thank you again to Shortform for sponsoring many of the audios in this video. Now you heard me talk about shorts, right? You can see more about shorts there and that's why I encourage you to get the slides because that's a horrible URL to try to read to try to type in that bottom left hand corner but you'll see that they are 60 seconds or less it's a hard stop on 60 seconds but it's a great way for you to be able to be seen and a lot of the businesses that I work with now because they know I mean we all go here first right we all are very visual and picture oriented they actually create for YouTube first because they know 50 billion and they know it's evergreen and they know it's the number two search engine so their business strategy is they create for YouTube first and they repurpose it in TikTok and Reels because not everybody's in TikTok, not everybody's in Reels. And you may get the instant view there, but they do want to make sure that the video gets the most exposure and they put it into YouTube first. Now, you heard me if um, you were at Marketech, I actually talked about it the other way around having and taking your reels and your TikToks and putting them into YouTube. You can do that as well. I just think it's interesting now, especially when I was with those 8,000 creators at the Workbench conference, that they actually use YouTube first because that's where they make the most money, they get the most traffic, and they get a lot of other visibility from the two other networks. But the, the lion's share is actually YouTube. 
So it's really your call for your business. You really need to think about strategy wise, how does using YouTube to grow your business fit in? So it could be that you're showcasing some of the things that are happening behind the scenes of your business. But it could also be that you're using shorts to shorten up and edit a long form video. So you're going to draw them in. So let's say, um, you know, I'm, I'm deciding whether or not I want heating and air conditioning maintenance. I mean, does it, you know, is it just a waste of money or do I want the maintenance or did I just call them when something's broken? You know, do, what do I do? Um, so I might be looking at videos saying, you know, what's, what's the cost benefit? Um, what's involved? What's actually cared for? Um, why would I want to do it? What is it they do? So I could be looking for videos like that, but I don't, I look at videos and it's a 17 minute video, 28 minute video. And I'm thinking, oh, no, 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 I don't want to look at any of that. Or maybe it's a video that was recorded in 2020 and I'm thinking, well, it's 2024. Maybe there are different models. But when I'm looking in YouTube Shorts and I see, okay, you know, here's this latest model and how it saves you $500 compared to what you spend to do this. So it's a quick YouTube short that is just a short edit from a long form video. And now it's leading me to the long form video. All right, now there's a strategy behind that. So for you, when you leverage shorts, you can do things like quick tips. You can showcase exactly what makes your brand. So you can show the personal and authentic side, which is good for us as small businesses, because small business, this is our superpower. We know our clients and customers so well because we know them by name. We don't have to come up with a committee or a survey to try to figure out who they are. A lot of times we know their own words because we have them reach out to us or they or we reach out, they reach out. We are speaking to them. We have relationship with them, which that is gold. And we can also highlight our products here too. So it's a great place for people to see that. Remember what I said about four out of five YouTube videos are unboxings. So you can even show quickly, you know, okay, this is you know, my coffee cup and it's 16 ounces. So you can be in an hour long meeting and you don't have to worry about um, refilling, right? So it could be just a quick, quick video that I'm doing that's a short. And it also gives them a chance to see behind the scenes too. So there are thumbnails in YouTube shorts. You can put location tags. I like to do that often because I speak all throughout the United States and maybe, you know, today I'm doing a short, but I just was at an event um, in Peoria, Illinois or Chicago, Illinois. So I might tag it for a location. You can remix it and you can also look at your analytics, which is always important because if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. One dollar or one minute spent that's not lifting that bottom line or getting you closer to your goal is one dollar or one minute spent too much okay how you use shorts yes julie i'm so glad see thank you julie so much for dropping that in the chat because a lot of people are wondering you know what's the strategy behind that remember what i said about hope it's wonderful to have right so what you can do is you can post both the shorts and long form videos so when i'm using working with content creators so another conference that i go to is haven and achieve conference those are a hundred percent content creators those are your bloggers those are your influencers those are the people who are making you know fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a day on amazon as an amazon influencer they use their YouTube shorts to snippet their long form. So for their blog, they might have how to change your living room to the spring season where it's cherry blossom season in this. So now they're doing a whole changeover with things that you already have in the house. So they might have a nine to 12 minute video that is completely on this changeover, but they're going to do shorts that cut out 15 to 30 seconds of this video and show that because a lot of people want to look at that first before they commit to a longer form video. So what's nice with a short though, and what you need to remember is you've got to hook them immediately. It's got to be instant. So that's why when you're editing a long form video and cutting it into shorts, you got to drop them into the action, right? Don't put them into the talking head situation unless that's a part of what your strategy or your brand is. You got to tell stories, make it super snappy. Okay. Super snappy. All right. Those are the high points. There are six different things there you'll have in your handout, but making it snappy is so critical. And then what you can do, this says 42 to 46 seconds. I'm finding it shorter and shorter, everybody. So keep it as short as possible. If you can keep it around 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, you'll get the most views there. Again, this all depends on your business and the information that you're sharing and how you're drawing them in. But remember that. And then, of course, what are the calls to action? What is it that you want them to do? That's always the question before we post anything, be it a video, a photo, any text. 
what is it that we want them to do afterwards and what do we they want we want them to feel are they supposed to now be mm, pushed to go come and do business with us or to to research further are they supposed to be so happy and excited that they know this is the answer do you have limited time offers and are you engaging with them are you staying in connection with them so even within youtube long form you have community building now where you can respond to them there's youtube ai that will help people actually search the content of a video Video. So it can search it and take them right there. So they can actually ask questions of the video is really the way it's positioned. And now it'll take them to that timestamp in the video when that question is answered. Track your performance so you can take a look at your shorts and your long form video. Don't just track shorts, track your long form video too. And analyze those because <clears throat> if people are only watching three seconds of your long form video, that usually is a mistake. That means that we pressed a little bit hard on our screen and we jumped off right away. So that's a mistake that happens with scroll sometimes. But if they stay for 10 seconds, that's commitment. There's a real interest there. So that is somebody to take a look at and look and see where do people jump off in your video? Do they stay for the whole time? And what can you create again that would be helpful to them that would get them coming back and saving or subscribing to your channel. So when you know what your themes are, when you know what you want to create and who the star is, now you can upload and as well as engage because that's really important that the people side is where we actually are very nimble as small businesses and can stay connected with them, okay? There is a YouTube Creators channel where you can stay up to date on all the updates that are happening in YouTube. You can find it there at youtube.com slash YouTube Creators and you can learn more about creating shorts and being a YouTube creator short. This doesn't mean that you're monetizing it for you. You may not be an influencer or your money is coming from the, the likes and the people that come there and the brand collaborations that you have. It could be that you're driving traffic to your business. This is still a search engine. So keep that in mind that you just might want to know the updates because this is a top of a funnel that leads to grow your business. All right. You can also promote with video. Remember what I said, I wasn't going to spend a lot of time with this because I don't believe in using this until you've maxed out everything free and got everything set up correctly because if you promote something that's a hot mess all you're gonna get out there or the only brand image you have is chaos and confusion and nobody wants to spend time with that because they have their own chaos and confusion so you can see these are the different kind of ads that you have those bite-sized snackable and meal ads the one that I like to actually share with you to use um, that is the least costly is the either the bumper ad, but here's my favorite because you can do a lot in six seconds, right? You can put your brand name out there and your logo, but this is my favorite one right here and the skippable in-stream ads. We've all seen them when it says skip this ad. When people click skip the ad, then you're not charged at all. You've gotten all this visibility. So if you put your brand logo up front, your main message up front and the most important details. Think of this. If you are a newspaper, this is above the fold. The most important things before that skip ad message comes up. You've got five seconds here to get your brand in front of them. That's a long time in front of a video. That's a bumper ad. If you look here, you can pay for a bumper ad or you can do it for free where you don't pay unless somebody click, doesn't click and they watch all the way through. So when they watch all the way through, that's when you pay for that view. But until they do, you're getting five seconds of free visibility on YouTube. What you're also getting is this that hangs out on that right hand side. That's that companion banner that's free of charge with a skippable ad. So if you're not using these and you're thinking about doing ads, I would start with this because this gets you a lot of good visibility. Visibility. Just remember that when you're filming your video, put all the most important things in the first five seconds so it's seen before they have the, the option to actually skip, okay? So your next steps and your resources are to either create your channel, create and upload the videos, or start optimizing this. What is it that you need to do? Do you have a posting schedule? Do you have a featured video telling them exactly what they're going to get? Do you have a trailer video? Have you outlined everything in playlists? Do you know the words people use? Do you put all of your, your, um, your videos together? And do you have it aligned where the name of that is aligning with what people are searching for? So you've seen and actually asked what people are searching for, okay? Let me see, I've got a question here, so let me look at it real quick. Um, 
if I have a video of an interview I did on radio, would it make sense to slice and dice it into shorts to drive them to an edited longer vision version? Absolutely. Absolutely, Ty. It makes a whole lot of sense to do that. The, the thing is, a lot of us, and I'm guilty of this as well, we make content and we then think we've got to make new content. We don't understand that on the socials, we've got one to tit to really less than 10 seconds to capture somebody's attention. And maybe if the algorithm loves us for a moment, it'll push us out for a little bit, but it takes a little bit for that. So we may not get that many views compared to if we make sure that we are giving them every option. So maybe it doesn't resonate with me that you're talking about um, how to clean an air filter, but then all of a sudden you start talking about, oh, but um, this is how you make sure that you get the right air filter so you're not having to dust the house. Ooh, now I'm interested. Okay, so that short might do well for me compared to me looking at long form video going, oh, that's eight minutes of my life. Even if I put them at 2x um, speaking quickly, I don't know that I want to watch that. Okay, so it's a great way to draw them in, Ty. Absolutely. You've got the content already. No reason to, re to create it. It's repurpose it. Okay. The big thing here is knowledge is not powerful until applied. So I've dropped a lot of knowledge on you. What is it that you're going to use or that resonates right now with your channel or your plan with your channel? Or do you have a plan and a strategy? Now, if you want to connect with me, just so you guys know, you've got Grow Nebraska. Okay, so let me start with that. Grow Nebraska, you're already a member. Utilize them, everybody. They have the team. They have the support. They are there for you and they can access me. So that is the big benefit that you have from Grow Nebraska. I would lean into that because they really want to help you. They truly are vested in your success. If you want to talk to me for any reason, do know that I do have a membership group on Facebook that it is a paid membership group that after every time I do a Wednesday training on 430, I take deeper dives into some Q and A's that people have right just because they may not want to reach out on me one on one one on one or they could be trying to reach out to me on email and unfortunately I'm not super responsive I do take two to three days embarrassingly enough that's what it takes just because I do get a lot of, of emails and I do try to stay focused on the webinars and sessions I'm doing but I still definitely want to be of help to you but you have the best the absolute best are available to you right at your your fingertips and that is grow Nebraska so make sure you take advantage of them and I'm gonna model for you what I talk about in any session that I do if you've provided good product good service good information ask for a review people would leave you a review if you would ask in fact most people who haven't left a review said they intended to and they got distracted or they were never asked if they were asked they would have left a review and they would have actually left a better review so those who've left a good review said if they'd been asked, they would have left a better review, but they had to remember on their own and use their own gumption to get in there and to leave a review. So this is how you can leave a review for me. You can use that QR code or that easy URL that I provided to you, reviewmaria.com, because the other one is long gibberish, and I don't want you to have to try to figure that out and type that in. You don't have to leave me a review, but I would be honored and grateful if you did, okay? This is how you can connect with me as well. Just get with the Grow Nebraska team. I can tell you Zoe knows how to reach me, Tanya, Janelle, they all know how to reach me. So this is how you can reach me. And if you'll connect with me on socials, so we do have a free Facebook group where every Wednesday I do drop a Google update. And what a Google update is, is an update of everything Google. I mean, everything from they remove this from maps, you can't get to this section anymore in Google Business Profile, Google Search. This is what's changing up in search and how you can apply it as a small business. So it's a quick little audio cast that I actually do in that channel to give you the update, but not just that, how to apply it as small business, because I don't want to just drop factoids on you. We're more about need to know than what's just neat, N-E-A-T, to know. Now let's jump into Q&A, and I want to make sure that I'm here to serve you because you stayed with me. Zoe, thank you so much for the opportunity to, again, work with the members and what questions can I ask that maybe I didn't respond to or glazed over in the chat or maybe came in somewhere else? Or maybe I answered them all.
Thank you, Emily. Yes. <laughs> That's the only thing I wish Zoom would do. I mean, Google Meet doesn't do it either, but there are some platforms which will show people are typing, so then I'm, I can, hey, I'm hanging out. I'll submit that to Zoom now. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to stop sharing and let you take over. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ty. <laughs> 